Hello, and today we're going to talk about the AU 702A+. This is a dual soldering iron system, 70 watts per channel, so you get 70 watts out of each soldering iron channel here. Micro-controlled soldering station. This is a unit that was provided to me by SRASolder.com for some testing, and I've put it through a lot of abuse in the last couple of weeks, actually. Let's start off by touching base on what it comes with. Uh, AU typically sends their units out with more than just here's your soldering iron. Uh, you get a nice brass coil tip cleaner tray. Uh, they have their typical soldering iron stand holder, um, which actually does have a tweezer attachment as well because this comes with a soldering iron and soldering tweezers. I believe they're the uh, T007 SMD tweezers. Um, I've talked about the base in previous videos, I also have a video showing you how to put it together, but I do like the, the, the steel construction, the solid feel of it, and the big rubber feet on the bottom which prevent it from sliding across your workstation or knocking your soldering iron loose by accident or sliding. So it, it really is a, it's, it's a nice stand. They also give you a piece that can mount off the side if you choose to. This is completely up to you. This is a kind of a, well, not kind of, it is a soldering iron holder. If you have a bigger rail solder, you can simply mount that off the stand. There's several ways to put these together. You can see mine actually has the sponge tray underneath the soldering iron. You could also mount the sponge tray on the side and put your tip cleaner tray underneath the soldering iron. So check out the video in my description for different ways of putting the AU soldering station base together. And I'll give you some more details on that if you're interested. It also comes with the IC popper and a spare uh, IC popper spring as well. You have your spare heating element for your soldering iron. Your tip alignment tool, this aligns what I call the pointy tweezer tips. Two different sets of tweezers. These, these are the, uh, the pointy tips I was talking about here. And then the ones I have currently installed are the ones that I refer to as the flat tips. They're a little bigger. Let me unwind here. They're a little bigger, uh, more, more surface area contact. So they also transfer heat a little bit better than the pointy tips, but I also have another video in the link in the description. You can check that link out too as well on how to use the SMD tweezers from AU. You really don't need a lot more heat transfer if you're using a low melt soldering paste and you're doing the surface work. Uh, the pointy tweezers, when I tested them, only got to about, let me see, where was it? Two, 270 degrees Celsius when it was set to 320. which was more than enough to do the work if you look at my SMD tweezer video. Um, the flathead tweezer tips that are currently installed would reach 270 degrees with the unit set to 320 degrees Celsius. And again, for surface mounting work, that's more than enough heat. There's no need to uh, recalibrate that channel. Um, AU also sends a pack of 10 different soldering tips and they give you a nice nice choice actually. They give you a good variety of tips. Uh, there's nine in a plastic bag like this as well as one installed on the soldering iron itself. And that pretty much covers everything it comes with. So let's go ahead and take a look at the unit here real fast. The unit's a really nice, heavy base. It's solid. It doesn't feel flimsy at all. It feels like really good quality, as a matter of fact. You have your standard computer power supply, three-prong plug in the back. Also has a fuse in the back as well. The switch to turn it on. Let me show you that real quick. Is located in the back here and your fuse is right next to the power plug, along with some other information on the labels like the serial number and the model number of the unit. 
it's running a 150 watt transformer and in the 150 watt transformer it actually has three different rails of voltage you have uh, two 24 volt rails independent one goes to the tweezers one goes to the soldering iron and then a 10 volt rail which actually is controlling the microprocessor for controlling the two different soldering irons and the temperature and, and the thermistor and everything else so let's go ahead and turn this on real fast and I'm going to heat up the tweezers since I wasn't able to show you the flat tips completely since they uh, soldered themselves together when I cooled them down and put this just enough to break those tweezers apart that should be plenty uh, we'll put it up to 320 so you can see turning it on and off is very simple and once you set the temperature you want to be at you'll actually watch the unit monitor the temperature and climb there's a little red dot right here in the corner of each display and that little red dot is indicating that the heater is actually on and that's throwing power to the heating elements on the soldering iron or the soldering tweezers once it reaches temperature that little red dot will go on and off to maintain the temperature that you set it to as you can see with the little red dot popping on and off right now let's go and see if uh, this is hot enough to nope they're still warming up as I mentioned the tweezers take a little longer to actually warm up so we'll give those a second no, I'm wrong. They just not at the solder, actually. So the flat tips, uh, the reason I call them flat tips is they do have a, a wider surface area than compared to the pointy tips. But the, the heat that it reaches is still more than enough for doing the surface mount work that you'd be using these tweezers for. So I'm going to go ahead and put these back into the holder here. And we'll turn that off. So to turn the iron on that you want to operate is very simple. You simply hold the function button or the power button right here. Press it down. Set your temperature with your up and down arrow keys. So what temperature you want your desired temperature to be that you're working at. And to turn it off, hold it down for about a second it turns off. Now this unit also incorporates a calibration system so you can calibrate each iron individually and by doing this while the unit's off let me say you're going to simply just press the up key and the power key or the function key as referred to in the manual and that will put you in a double zero meaning it's at no variance plus or minus for the calibration uh, then you can actually adjust your calibration plus or minus 60 degrees Celsius now in doing so of course you don't want to depend on any type of infrared type of uh, temperature measuring tool and I'll tell you why real quick something like this the infrared meters with the laser to you know check the temperature of something they're not quite as accurate when it comes to pointing them at metal and because the soldering irons are made out of a shiny metal they'll give you an inaccurate reading when you're trying to get the true temperature of the tip itself. So you want to use a K style thermostat, maybe one that came with your multimeter. It's going to be a little probe that pretty much looks like this. And take the actual temperature of the tip and if you notice the temperature of the tip is off you can use the calibration menu by pressing up and function and adjust it to plus or minus to actually equal the true temperature of what you measured with your k-style thermostat to get out of that feature you just simply again hold down the function or power button and they both have this feature so you can adjust both sides independently and I did find in my testing that the soldering iron actually came out to exactly 320 degrees Celsius when I set it to 320 degrees Celsius. So there was no need for calibration at all with the soldering iron. It was very accurate.
And I was very happy to see that. As with most modern sewing stations these days, they're fairly well calibrated out of the factory. They both both channels also incorporate a sleep timer. And the sleep timer is by holding the down key and the function key or power key. And you can see that the sleep timer on my soldering iron is set to 30 minutes right now. The T is for timer. You can do this on both sides and you can set them at different times. So you can have your tweezers stay on, which is setting your timer for zero and your soldering iron to turn off after 30 minutes. And you have a variance of 60 minutes. You can either do one minute up to 60 minutes. When the unit does go into sleep, you'll see three hyphens go across the uh, display here. I'll, in fact, we'll demonstrate that right now. So once you set your sleep timer to your desired amount of time, you hold down the function or power button again, and then it's set. So by going into it again with down the function, you'll see it's set to one minute. I'll turn the soldering iron on. We'll definitely drop the temperature there. This was something else I was doing earlier. We'll put the soldering iron to about 320 degrees. There you can see it's reached temperature really fast. So we're going to put this back into the dock and give it a minute. And then you'll actually see how the sleep timer functions on the unit. Um, other testing that I actually did with it is I tried to break some really big joints. Some, uh, take this coil here, for example. This is something that would pull the heat away very easily from the soldering iron. And I wanted to make sure it could actually maintain the temperature I set it to. And it had absolutely no problem breaking these joints and resoldering these joints and maintaining the temperature with 70 watts of power behind it. Um, I was very pleased with that. So if you look at this one here, I'm just going to lay down on top of that for about a second. And the whole thing, yep, there it goes. That's all free. I also gave it some other difficult tasks. Uh, I did some tinning of some 14 gauge wire, which I didn't expect to be an issue at all. And then I decided to throw some 10 gauge wire at it, and that wasn't an issue either. And then I threw some 8 gauge wire at it, and believe it or not, I had no problem taking the 8 gauge wire either. So in about a few seconds, you'll actually see the sleep timer kick on, and there it is. You get the three dashes across the display telling you that your iron is asleep, and there's a few ways you can wake this up. According to the manual, you can hit any of the buttons, the up, the down, or the function power key. Now, the problem with hitting the up or the down is you may actually change the temperature that you have it set at also. So if you're going to hit a button on the base station itself to wake it up, I would hit the function power key. Another thing I discovered which wasn't mentioned in the manual is both the tweezers and the soldering iron have, let's say, some sort of a motion sensor built into them where just simply picking up the tweezers will turn it back on. Or sorry, picking up the soldering iron will turn it back on. And then when you put it back down and it's not moving is when the sleep timer actually starts to count that one minute or whatever you have the sleep timer set to. So I find that very nice because if you're in the middle of working on something and say you had the sleep timer set to 10 minutes and all of a sudden whatever you're doing is it's just your iron's gone cold and you don't know why and you forgot you had that sleep timer set. Um, this way it knows with this little switch inside. You can hear it rattle around when I shake it. 
There's a little switch inside making a contact against a couple of wires, a little ball rolling around inside a little canister, and it knows when you're actually using the iron. So it won't go to sleep on you while you're actually using it. But you also have to keep in mind if you have it set for 10 minutes, it may not start counting that 10 minute sleep timer until it's perfectly still back in its holder. So over the last couple of weeks of using this station, I can honestly say I've had no problems with it. It's been very pleasant to use. It was able to handle everything I threw at it. Uh, in fact, the biggest test I gave it, which is one that in some of my old soldering stations actually had problems accomplishing just a year ago because they didn't have enough power or they didn't have enough power to maintain the temperature where it needed to be is a 3D heat bed. This is the MK3. This is a 3D aluminum heat bed. So when you talk about aluminum, this is three millimeters of solid aluminum. And when you're trying to solder wires onto, this is 16 gauge, I did previously have a 14 gauge wire on it, but when you're trying to solder wire onto an aluminum heat bed, you're basically soldering wire onto a big heat sink which just draws the heat away from your soldering iron. This is one of the, the, the more challenging tasks I have ever given any soldering station. And I'm glad to say that the 702A Plus handled it without an issue. As a matter of fact, when I first turned on the soldering iron, you saw it was set all the way up to about 480 degrees Celsius. This is the reason why. It's not recommended to ever go that high, but in certain cases you may have to, especially when you're dealing with an eight inch by eight inch, three millimeter thick sheet of aluminum. And you're trying to solder some wires on there. As a matter of fact, I still have to go back and solder a resistor and two small LEDs. Um, so that will be my next task. But I've had stations in the past that have failed and I've actually had to take two soldering stations together and combine the heat of two soldering stations at the same time while having somebody else hold the wire in place for me just to solder the wire onto that that aluminum heat bed and with the AU702A plus I didn't have that issue at all I was able to hold one wire with my pliers in one hand and the soldering iron in the other hand and it gave me enough heat to heat up the actual plate and make a solid joint and without issue if you're looking for a good dual soldering station, I definitely recommend the AU702A Plus uh, from SRA-Solder.com. They're a really, really good set of people to work with and uh, I've, I've purchased plenty of products from them in the past actually. There's a few more I just received this week that I still need to do some videos on that I purchased from them. So looking forward to getting that done as well. But thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments in the comment section. Don't forget to check out my other videos with the SMD tweezer video on how to do surface work with the AU SMD tweezers, as well as the docking station video to see different ways you can actually put your iron docking station together. And if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up, and I'll be doing more in the future, I hope, so please go ahead and subscribe so you'll be notified of any new videos that I release in the future. Thank you.